happen for us, a time where we can fellowship in his word tonight. We are going to... Uh, done for us and who he is to us and and the things that he's working out in our lives and and so we can be better for him to do his will and to do what it is he's called us to do the only thing that really matters is doing the will of God that's the only thing that really matters because in the end we all are as believers we all are shooting for and going for hearing the words well done thou good and faithful servant and the only way that we want to get there and Jesus even said it those that do the will of my Father in heaven, those are the ones who are going to make it in. So doing the will of God needs to be a top priority for every, every believer. Tonight we're going to look at uh, Psalm chapter 91, and we're going to look at verse 1. Psalm 91 and 1. It says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So our topic of conversation tonight is simply shadows. Shadows. Father God, we give you glory, we give you honor and praise, and we just thank you right now, Father God, for being who you are. We thank you, Father God, for even allowing us to call on your name. God, we bless you, Father God. It is a privilege for us to call on the name of Jesus, God. And we, we don't take it lightly, we don't take it for granted, Father God, we just bless you and we honor you and we thank you, Father God, for allowing us, Father God, to be a part of you, Father God, for adopting us into your family, Father God. Now we cry, Abba, Father. So we bless you, we honor you, we thank you for loving us that way, that you did not allow us to stay in our sins, Father God, but you made a way of escape for us through Jesus, God. And we honor you, we bless you. I pray, Father God, this night that I decrease, you increase, Father God. Let the words that I speak be the words that you want spoken, Father God. Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Do what you do. Minister to the people of God. I pray, Father God, that this word will reach those that you have designed for it to reach, Father God, to, to, to bless them, Father God, to help them, to lift them up, Father God, and bring them into a deeper understanding and revelation of who you are and what it is that you have designed for them. God, we give you praise, honor, and glory, and everybody who agrees with it, you already know what to say. Amen and amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We all have a, a pretty, pretty decent idea, a pretty good idea of what a shadow is. A shadow, I'll give you a little example, is you have this rack of lights up here. And when the lights are turned on, the light has a purpose. Is to shine on, to illuminate, to, 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 to bring clarity to what's on stage. So if I turn the light on and the, the light has a destination, it will go all the way back here to the back wall. But if I stand in front of that light, that means that the back wall, this section of the back wall is not going to get what it needs from that light because I put something in its way. And so now the light hits me and the thing or it hits whatever I put in the way of the light and that particular thing will then cast its shadow in the place where the light should go. And that's the way it is in life, spiritually for us as believers and, and, and for other people who need the light of God. They need the light. They need Jesus to shine in their lives. And sometimes what we'll do, we'll throw stuff in their way. And so now instead of the light of Christ hitting them and bringing clarity and bringing deliverance and bringing healing, it hits us. And now they're getting us. They're getting our shadow instead of getting Christ. And so one thing we have to work on is moving things out of the way that casts a shadow. A word shadow, the word shadow, this is a really good definition. Now, the, the, what I just described was the way most of us really look at the word shadow. This right here, this definition is very, very interesting. The word shadow means a dominating presence or influence, a dominating presence or influence. What this is saying to us is that whoever's shadow that you're under, they will have the most influence over you. 
they will have even the most dominating voice in your life. Whoever shadow that you're standing under. The word tells us that to abide under the shadow of the almighty, meaning that he needs to be the most dominating influence in our lives and his voice needs to be the most dominating voice in our lives. So really you don't have to ask anybody what it is that they believe in. All you got to do is look at how they act and what they do because that will tell you whose shadow that they're standing under. This is why you can have some who say that they are Christians and still hate someone who has a different opinion politically because they are not standing under the shadow of the almighty. They are standing under the shadow of their political party and their political party allows for you to hate someone who doesn't agree with you. The reason you can have a black man who hates a white man, who hates a red man, who hates a yellow man, who hates a brown man, and same for every race, you have a white man who hates all those, and you have a red man who hates all those, and you, hate all, and you have these people who hate people who don't look like them, is because, and even though they may say that they're Christian, they are not standing under the shadow of the Almighty, they are standing under the shadow of their race. There are some, you can have two churches right across the street from one another, different denominations, and they won't talk to or fellowship with one another because you don't do what I do and you don't do it the way that I do it. I won't talk to you. I won't speak to you. And I'm speaking from this perspective. I'm speaking from experience because this is what I've seen with my own eyes. And you can have people arguing. You have pastors who won't fellowship and thinking that you're trying to steal my members and you're trying to steal my members and this, that, and the other. And they won't speak to each other, live right next door to one another, have churches right across the street from one another. They are not living under the shadow of the Almighty. They are living under the shadow of their denomination. And their denomination is ruling their lives and telling them what it is that they need to do. If someone doesn't agree with you, it's okay for you to not like them or not fellowship with them because that's what that shadow allows. There are some, when the light of Christ is trying to shine on someone else's life and, they're trying to, and he's trying to bring deliverance, he's trying to bring healing, he's trying to bring clarity, he's trying to bring revelation to them. And sometimes they don't get what they need because we throw in the light's path, our traditions. So now the light, instead of the light hitting them, the light is hitting us and we're casting on them our traditions. So now they're missing the light of Christ. And the reason they're able to miss the light of Christ is because we're not even allowing them to stand under the shadow of the Almighty. We're allowing them to stand under the shadow of our tradition. But there's no healing. There's no deliverance. There's no being set free. There, there, there's nothing there that comes from Christ because they are in the shadow of our traditions versus being under the shadow of the Almighty. Whoever shadow you are under will have the most dominating voice in your life and they will have the most influence over you. Matter of factly, whoever shadow you stand under, they're the one whose will that you are doing. If I stand in the way of Christ shining on you, that means I'm telling you, don't worry about that. Do what I'm about to tell you to do because you're standing under my shadow. You're standing right here next to me you're under my shadow, so now you're listening to me. But if I would just move myself out of the way and allow the light of Christ to hit you, now you're under his shadow. Can I, can I borrow, uh, Judah, let me borrow you for a second, please, if you don't mind, sir. Bro, you got, can I borrow you too? Let me, let me borrow, let me borrow both of you. Do you stay on that side of the stage for me, if you don't mind? Bro, let me get you, yeah, I always call him bro, so when I say bro, y'all know who I'm talking about. Let me get you to come on this side. Judah, you stay there. Yeah, turn around. Turn around face that wall for me. Okay, you good. Okay. Now, excuse me for a second. Let me talk to my bro for a minute. Again? Okay, oh, okay, okay. Let me get you, let me get you to some back. Come back towards me a little bit. How's that? A little better? All right, perfect. Okay. Do it again. Do it again. Okay. One more time. What's the matter? Hmm? Okay. Okay. 
Well, you got to kind of strain a little bit to hear him. Okay, okay. Because he is not under the shadow of his father, he has to try a little bit harder because y'all may not have heard it, but bro here was calling his son's name. But he was sitting there struggling because there's a distance between he and his dad. Now, I want you to turn around. Turn around, Judah. Bro, you can turn around, too. Now, the light is coming this way, so I want you to stand in his shadow on that side. You can face this way, too. You can turn this way. In that same tone in which you called his name, call it again. You hear that a lot better? Why do you hear it a lot better? Because you're close to him. Because you are standing in his shadow. So there's nothing in between the two of you because you're so close that you can hear what your father has to say. So when he talks to you in that still, quiet voice, it's not a struggle for you to hear because there's nothing blocking you, there's nothing in between you, and now you're actually standing in his shadow. Yes, sir. Another part about being under the shadow of the Most High is simply this. If I have a problem with Judah, you, uh, yeah, one more second. If I have a problem with Judah, and I want to contend with him, I want to fight with him. The reason I won't go and attack Judah because he's in the shadow of his father. And I know that if I go over there right now and attack Judah, not only will I have to contend with him, but I have to contend with his father. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, on, on that point right there, oh, I don't know what that was, excuse me. On, on that point right there, that must have been some powerful teaching right there. Make everything just blow up. Now, now, under that same example I've given you, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about Job. Think about Job for a second. Here is God. Angels are coming in, and there's Satan. Yeah, wh what are you doing up here? Well, I'm just going back to and fro and forth in, in the earth and, and sin. And then God says, well, have you considered Job? And the enemy, the devil, he comes back and says, yeah, but you have a hedge of protection around him. So when you're under the shadow of the Most High, the enemy knows that if I contend with you, I got to contend with your father also. Yes. It wasn't invisible to the enemy. He saw this. I cannot attack him because you got this hedge of protection around him. But if you remove this protection then I can come and get him. So when you are under the shadow of the Most High, there is safety for you. There's a place of refuge. There's a place of safety. And the enemy himself don't really want to mess with you because if I mess with you while you're under the shadow of the Most High, I have to contend with him also. I have to contend with the one who's cast his shadow over you. Even when we go back to the beginning of the scripture where it says, he that dwell, dwelleth in the secret place. That word secret, we, we, we pretty much know what a secret is. A definition of secret from a dictionary would say, it's kept hidden from knowledge or view. But in the original Hebrew, it talks about a cover, a disguise, or protection. So when you're under the shadow of the Almighty, when you're in his secret place, a secret place is not available to everyone. It's only available to those who knows that it's actually a secret. Now, he's not saying that for every believer, I'm going to keep this a secret from you. But if it's a secret, that means you have to do some due diligence to find out and uncover this secret. So what the Lord is saying is that spend some time with me and find out how to get underneath my shadow. It's hidden from you because you're not seeking after it. But now that you are aware that it is a secret place out there for you, and that's inside of God, God is saying now, do your due diligence and uncover the secret. And when you uncover the secret, you get into the shadow of the Almighty. Inside of the shadow, God doesn't have to scream your name. He can still talk in a still, quiet voice. And because you are in the shadow, because you are in close proximity, you can hear him when he says to you. 
when the Holy Spirit speaks to you because you are in close proximity, because you are under the shadow, now you can hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. So if you're wanting to learn how to hear the Holy Ghost, spend more time with God and get under his shadow. Spend some time in the secret place. And when you get in the secret place, he lets you know that there's a safe place for you. You are now under the shadow of the Most High God. When we cast and we stand in the way of the light of Christ hitting the individual, hitting its destination, and we look back again at, at this traditional piece, we throw in our traditions. But what Jesus says about traditions, Mark 7 13, the word of God says, thus you, and this is the amplified version, thus you are nullifying and making void and of no effect the authority of the word of God through your traditions, which you in turn hand on. And many things of this kind you are doing. If you really look at that scripture, it lets you know that whatever shadow you're standing under will have the most dominating voice in your life, and that dominating voice in your life has the power to shut off every other voice, even the voice of God. So the danger of us continuing in tradition is that we are voiding people of hearing the voice of God. We'd much rather you hear our traditions and the way that we do things versus hearing the voice of the Most High. You are abiding under our shadow. You are now doing our will. The danger of doing the will of anything or anyone else outside of God, Jesus says, the only ones that will make it into the kingdom of heaven are those that do the will of my Father in heaven, not the will of your race, not the will of your political party, not the will of your traditions, not the will of your religious practices, and not the will of your denomination. Too many believers are stuck under all these shadows. And God is saying, get rid of the voices of all that. His voice has to be the most dominating voice in our lives, and his voice will then shut out the voice of everything else. When you begin to learn his voice, now you know his voice. And when you know his voice, now someone else begins to speak, and you know, no, that's not him. That's not him. What did Jesus talk about? My sheep know my voice, and the voice of another, they're not going to follow because they are standing under his shadow. They are in close proximity to him. He has the most dominating voice in their lives. Whoever shadow you stand under will have the most dominating voice in your life, and they will have the most influence over you. They will tell you how to live. When we spend time in the word of God, it tells us how we ought to live. When you spend more time in your political, Party, it tells you how to live. When you spend more time in your traditions, it tells you this is how you live. This is the way we do it. When you spend more time with people of your race, there's nothing wrong with you spending time with people of your race, but if what they're saying doesn't line up with the word of God, there's a problem. I'm a te- whoever gets offended just gets offended. Just because I'm a black man doesn't mean that I'm going to stand behind every black cause. Because if it does not line up with the word of God, I'm standing under the shadow of the Almighty. Y'all can stay in your own shadow. I'm not going to hate someone who doesn't look like me because some of y'all may feel that, well, that's how they do. Well, all of them don't do that. And I can't do them the way I don't want to be done. I don't want you to lump me in one category, so I'm not going to do it to you. Because I stand under the shadow of the Almighty, that means I have to love. But because y'all don't like such and such, if I stand under your shadow, you will accept me if I hate. So because you are not lined up with the things of God and the word of God, I will not stand under your shadow. If my political party says they don't vote like you, they don't think like you, they don't like this particular president, they don't like this particular congressman, they don't like this. They don't like that. Please don't misjudge me in thinking that, well, he must be of this political party. Like, look, I'm not a fan of nobody. To be honest with you, politically, I'm just not a fan of anyone. But the reality of it is there are many who stand under these political platforms, and what happens is that now these 
parties have become the most dominating voices in their life. So they can say that, yes, I am a Christian, but I'm ready to go to blows with you because you don't like my president. I'm ready to cuss you out. I'll kill you if need be because you and I don't agree politically. Newsflash. Whether you choose to believe it or not, you ain't no Christian. No matter what you say because you are not standing under the shadow of the Almighty. His, your father's voice is not your, well, your supposedly father's voice is not the most dominating voice in your life. So whoever has the most dominating voice in your life will influence you and they will tell you what to do. When a child is in the shadow of their parents, that means that their parents need to be in, under the shadow of the Almighty so they can train their children under the shadow of the Almighty. You cannot stand under the shadow of the Almighty and go and let your child be raised by homosexual television cartoons doing things to each other, and all of a sudden, now your child is growing up under the shadow of that. But in order for your child to grow up under the shadow of the Almighty, they need to be standing in your shadow as you stand in the shadow of the Almighty. All these movements going on, all this stuff going on, and people are, are pushing their agendas and they're doing all this stuff, but yet they say that they're Christians. Yeah. But why is this movement have the most dominating voice in your life? Why is this movement influencing you to agree with stuff that God disagrees with? Why are you saying that you are a believer in Christ and a follower of his, but you hear the voice of everything and everyone else except his? Yeah. Why are we struggling even hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit? Yes, we need to be trained and we need to grow in different areas. But when you're in the, the shadow of the Almighty, and he has the Holy Spirit who now speaks to us to tell us the heart and mind of the Father, who leads us and guides us in all truth. If I'm in the shadow of the Almighty, that means when he sent his Holy Spirit, now I can hear his voice because I am in the shadow. I'm in the shadow of the Almighty. You cannot say that you are Christian and allow everyone and everything else to be the dominating influencer in your life. You have to allow God and his voice to be the most dominating voice in your life. Whoever has the most dominating voice in your life, they're the one who's going to tell you what to do. Therefore, you are doing their will. And if you are not doing the will of God, regardless of how much you say you are a Christian, you will not make it into the kingdom of heaven according to Matthew 7, 21 through 23, the word of God. And if someone else comes along and said, oh, it's okay, you can do this, the only thing they're trying to do is to drag you under their shadow. But there's no safety, there's no protection, there's no healing, there's no deliverance in their shadow. Everything you need is in the shadow of the Almighty. Father God, we give you honor. We praise you, we bless you, Father God. We thank you right now for your word. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us and, and teaching us to help us understand the importance of being under the shadow of the Almighty. God, we give you praise and thanksgiving. I pray, Father God, this word has gone forth, Father God, and, and blessed the hearer, Father God, and now they'll make a conscious decision, Father God, in an effort to get inside of the secret place, in your secret place, Father God, and abide under your shadow, the safest place we know, Father God, in the shadow of of the Almighty. We bless you. We honor you. We give you praise and thanksgiving, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.